Hi, everyone. You saw my dog. I, I thought I was, I, I needed to bring something from Sweden to you guys, and that was my dog in the beginning. Uh, maybe we can see him again. He's probably back home sleeping while I'm here trying to save the world from boring PowerPoint presentations and uh, boring Word documents. So I will try to give you a resume of our journey going from uh, basically an idea to become the number one ad in, in Microsoft PowerPoint's ecosystem. That means that I will tell you our journey. And our journey starts with my wingmate, Matthias, and myself. We share two things. One is the haircut. And the other thing is that we love to do big stuff, as big as possible. Uh, Matthias, for me, and we're totally different. So Matthias is the sandstorm in the horizon where I kind of, in the back, in the back try to pick things up and, and organize that in some way. Going back five years ago, we saw this amazing opportunity. We saw millions of people uploading images online. We also saw millions of people starting to use images to communicate. And today we communicate with images in so many different ways. For instance, to impress, to convince, to explain, and to some, sometimes also to entertain, of course. So when we started this startup in Sweden, we saw this. We saw everyone was biting the apple. But we couldn't find the loose end in that wooden, wo wooden ball that we saw as the Google environment or the Google ecosystem. So we couldn't really find our, our spot because we wanted to reach the mass with a lot of images that people were sharing, uploading, and we wanted to reach the mass where they needed the image. Exactly at that point where they needed the image. And it was hard for us to find a way, but one day, my friend Matthias, he reached out to me and said, hey, Henrik, do you know that there are 400 PowerPoints made every second? And then we went quiet, like entrepreneurs, starting to calculate that into numbers. That's 11.5 billion PowerPoints made every year. Probably a lot of those PowerPoints are containing images. And probably those images are not legally cleared, so to speak. So what we did was reaching out for Microsoft as this idea standing like this dog in front of that big wall, trying to find a way in. And our learning is that if you want to find a way in, you need to find that way through the people with the biggest problem that you are trying to solve. For us, that was the legal guys. So the legal guys were constantly sitting with piracy issues in PowerPoint. And we told them this story, you said, you sit in PowerPoint and you're frustrated because you can't find the right photos. Nevertheless, the illegal ones. So you decide to go online and steal something or drag or drop from somewhere. But don't get surprised if someone comes knocking at your door. It's the police. They drag you into court and they sue you for lifetime. Okay, but what if there was a, a solution for that? What if PowerPoint actually had images inside PowerPoint. And we said, Picket is that solution. This is where you can actually get access to millions of images, no hassle, no fuss. You just ace your presentation. And of course, this is a little bit of an over-the-top over story. But the fact is that 85% of all images that we use online are in some way not really the ones that we can use or should use the way we use it. So we have a problem, and if you narrow that down to PowerPoints, it's probably a higher number. Okay, we told them another story. We told them that you sit there in PowerPoint, and you're frustrated because you want that unicorn image. You want that image, but you can't find it anywhere. It doesn't exist, not even on Google. Are you the one that should take that image yourself? Probably not. It's not a good solution. 
But what if you could reach out to people when you sit in PowerPoint and get access to other creative people that want to help you solve that problem? Picket is that place where you can actually hit that don't panic button, get access to thousands of people that are ready to help you create that specific image or video that you need for your presentation. Okay, so the journey began, and this is a, some tips for you guys who wants to reach out to Microsoft. Spend a lot of nights at crappy hotels, because what's really important to know with a, with a company like Microsoft, or whatever company, is that it's full of human beings, and human beings are in need of relations. So you cannot Skype yourself to a good relation. You need to meet up. So what Matthias and I did after those stories and some push and help from the legal guy was to travel the world, basically. We went to every crappy hotel, low fare rates on every plane, spent a lot of nights on places like this just to meet up with people. And what we also invented, I don't know if you ha have tried this, guys, but if you have a meeting in London, in Tokyo, whatever, and it's one meeting, you make sure to book a couple of days, and then you start networking in the receptions, okay? So you just sit there, because all of a sudden, people will come up to you and ask, why are you sitting here? And if you have some names to drop, you can say, yeah, we thought we had a meeting with this guy. Aha, well, then you should meet this guy, and that guy, and that, that person. And then it becomes a network, and the network grows. So for us, it's been very important just to sit, like Matthias does, in the reception for days. Sometimes we went to their coffee shop, of course, to, to reach out there, to them and that place. The biggest and, and most important things, like, El, like always, is, of course, timing. Timing is the number one. And when we were, at that point, around five years ago, reaching out to Microsoft, they also understood that they were a little bit behind when you talk about being open to startups, having an ecosystem where a startup actually can start. So we were, we were at the right time with something that is quite simple to understand as well, an image solution for those 1.2 billion people that are out there on a daily basis working with PowerPoint. Talking about timing, This is another opportunity, or uh, another, it, it's like, it's 2015. It's the build conference, and the guy to the left is Satya Nadella, and he's the CEO of Microsoft. I was at the dinner uh, with a partner in London when my phone went totally bananas. So how about we get started by talking about how we are moving from office from us to office with partners. Let's talk about making a presentation. And when I'm doing this, I of course want a constant source of high quality professional photographs that I can integrate into my slide deck. Picket Me is a relatively new company that is building just such a service and has provided an add-in here that lets me search through the photos in those service and paste them directly within PowerPoint. So and you saw the other, the other company after us. It's called Uber. Uh, so what happened there? Satya actually talked about Picket as a partner. And for us, that was like two years after we started this idea. And that was a, an amazing milestone. And the reason why he actually talked about us was that he knew that he needed to present something new. But also, we've been relationship building stuff around him, and we were in contact with people constantly around Satya, so he knew about us. Uh, for you guys, because I want to share a couple of mistakes, uh, for you guys, you saw, probably saw that we, our name was Pick Hit Me, and for me, that was not a big thing, but when we hired our CMO, he said, we need to change name, because no one is understanding that name, uh, and I said, okay, let's try, and uh, Actually, when we said pick it, people went home trying to find our web page, and they spelled it like this, pick it. So uh, when we changed and we bought the URL, the top domain for pickit.com, our traffic just increased amazingly. 
So that was a mistake from my side. I thought it wasn't that important, but it was. Another thing, another kind of small and big mistake is this. I don't know if you guys see it, but it's a Windows phone. I don't know if you know about that, but it's probably the market share that they had. Uh, what we did as a first thing, the first mobile app we ever built was a Windows phone app. And the people in Sweden, our startup friends, they were just, hello guys, what are you doing? Why are you building a Windows phone app? But for us, we knew that, of course, it's a mistake in some way, but it was also a way for us to really show that we could connect people that produce content with people that need content. So we could actually connect Windows Phone with Office. So when you were in Office, you got images from people in the Windows Phone environment, and you could ask them to help you. So this was actually, it, it was a, a conscious mistake, so to speak. We knew that. but. It was of the cost of a, of, a, of a Windows phone app, but that was okay. So we needed to prove ourselves a little bit. And we, needed, we didn't have to do it that big. We just needed to do something. The third mistake that I want to share, uh, talking about Microsoft and, and also being a tech company because we are not just an image provider. Uh, this is Roger, we call him Roger. This is the machine learning system that we have in our system. And to impress Microsoft, of course, we wanted to connect a lot of machine learning and AI back in the days. The thing is that Roger was quite immature, but we said, let's put him on every single image we have. Let's run every image through Roger. So he saw an image like this, and he thought it was a couple of elephants that are in the rain. Okay, so he added a lot of crap to our image bank. Uh, another version is this. That is a large pile of bananas. I don't know if you see that. It's not a large pile of bananas. Uh, so we just added this automatic tagging, keywording, uh, description machine that totally messed up our image bank. So when people were searching for bananas, they got this image, for example. Uh, okay, so what do we do now? We, now, time's flying. We're, we're not a kind of company now. We have a lot of users in PowerPoint. We constantly search the world of content to bring that up to our users, make it useful, make it easy to access. Uh, we work a lot with curated collections. That means that we put images in front of their eyes. Uh, we are exactly at your fingertips. We are in PowerPoint. We can even, at some points, also see what you're writing, and on that, based on that, also suggest content for you. Uh, the reason why we've been quite, quite successful with Microsoft because there is competition is that we see, we see productivity versus creativity some, some, as, as something that we work with. It doesn't mean that there are paradox in this, but for us, we work with the people that has productivity as a focus when they work. They mean they, we mean that they have a shorter deadline. They, they often need other people to guarantee that the images that they are using are pretty good images. We are not working with these 100 million creative professional people because they have a lot of good services. So we target our uh, audience with, with, uh, with things that are really fast and easy to use. Uh, and for us, we're constantly going back to this picture, talking about productivity. This is a no-brainer for us. Of course, Office is the, by far the largest ecosystem we could ever be in, be in. It doesn't mean that we have to be exclusive to that, but we are focusing on Office as, as our core target audience. Uh, one and a half years ago, we also got this investment from Microsoft Ventures. Uh, this is Nagraj, uh, who is the uh, head of Microsoft Ventures. Uh, they decided to invest in Picket because we basically were born in that company. Uh, and we've been doing so much to just fit in and align with their strategy. So it was kind of a no-brainer for them as well, being a part of us. 
so we work very actively with them today. We also work, work extremely active with our end users, of course. So we constantly measure and, and check how our users are, what they feel about us, if they feel that we are a must-have, a need-to-have. And you can actually do that in the Microsoft environment today. It's quite easy, but you couldn't do that like a year ago. It was really hard because you couldn't put anything uh, and get any kind of stats. But today we can measure everything in, in a split second. Uh, we also get access to a lot of companies, of course, because they use PowerPoint, they use Office on a daily basis. These are companies that we know have a picket density. That means that they have a plus 500 users that are active on Picket. Uh, and of course, we have business solutions as well that we can work with. Uh, the team is, at this picture, 20 people. Like in, that, in the Baltic Sea, that island that ma was mentioned, called Gotland. Uh, we are a team of 30 people today. Uh, and, and basically, we're doing everything. Uh, and we, we've, been that, we've been that size for a couple of years. But we are in, in a phase where we are about to grow pretty fast. So now things are happening. And that, that has been also important for us to just follow that journey with Microsoft. And it's been a, it's been a journey when, where you are kind of in the back seat. Because we cannot push them. And they need to mature in their ecosystem. So for us, it's about being persistent, make sure that we are there all the time. And the last picture, yes, we have uh, clip arts. We have plenty of clip arts. So we, are, we have a, an image bank that is basically covering everything from illustrations, uh, crowdsourced images, stock photos, uh, also, animations, uh, videos are coming as well. So we have plenty of different, different kind of uh, content that we work with. Uh, and it will probably grow. Uh, so that's my last picture. So thanks for being here. And uh, I just arrived 10 minutes before I went here. So I will probably be here as much as I can this afternoon. Thank you.